Looking now around the world at some major stories internationally, uh, you wouldn't know it by watching most of the corporate media, but something remarkable is happening in Iran. It's been going on for over a week now, women taking to the streets to protest that authoritarian regime, and it was all sparked by one tragic incident. Joining us now to discuss this and so much more of what's going on in that region is Lisa Daftari. She's the editor-in-chief of the Foreign Desk, and she covers these stories like no one else here in America. Lisa, thank you so much for being on top of this. Thank you. Thank you for covering this, actually. As you said, the mainstream media is silent about this. That's one of the main grievances that I'm hearing from the protesters in Iran. They want their stories told. They're bravely coming out, and, and they need the coverage. Let's do that. First of all, uh, let's go back to that fateful day, the young woman who was stopped by the, the religious police squads. Uh, what happened there? Yeah, this is the so-called morality police, which is not the best translation for the word. This is the regime forces that are uh, entrusted with just stopping young people. And I say young people because that's who they target. Um, and a bit of her hair was showing. She was wearing her hijab loosely. Uh, and a lot of young people do. That's really just the, 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 the young and fashionable way to wear it. She was detained. Uh, her cousin who was with her asked about her whereabouts uh, and uh, she was beaten so badly she slipped into a coma and then died. Regime, regime forces told her family that she actually had a heart attack, 22 years old, uh, and that she wasn't beaten, but there are eyewitnesses who saw the beating and that she did uh, suffer um, uh, you know, beating to the head, and that's why uh, she did slip into a coma and pass away. So oh. this did spark the outrage. Uh, and as I've said many times, you know, there's always a different catalyst that brings out the Iranian people. So for 43 years, we've seen uh, many different protests. If you remember the Green Revolution of 2009, that was over a fraudulent election, the re-election of Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. Then uh, we've had egg protests, and we've had gasoline protests, and we've had all sorts of protests that have different names. But once those young people get out onto the streets, the uh, message is the same. They're saying death to the dictator. They want the toppling of this regime. They want an end to the mullah's government. Yeah. And, and, and I know this is going to be a naive question, but is there any accountability within the Iranian government for this so-called morality police? Is there any oversight? I know I'm, I'm looking at it through American Western eyes, but uh, has there no, been any right. response? It's actually the best question, and it's not a naive question at all, because this is the juxtaposition of two societies. You know, we just had this, the, the George Floyd situation here in the United States, and everyone called it systemic. Everyone, mm. it, it was interesting. This is, in fact, systemic, and I'll tell you why. This is not a one-off. This is not as though the, the officers that were involved in the beating of Nasa Adini are going to be uh, investigated and tried, and they will be brought to, you know, justice. And... None of that will happen because it is, in fact, systemic if we want to use the word. So if we do look at it through Western eyes, mm. that is the issue here. That's why the people who come out onto the streets are not just protesting uh, for Massa Amini, although the, that's what the hashtags say and that's what, you know, they, they want justice for Massa, but they want justice for all the different Massas. Over 43 years, there have been many of these incidents, yeah. uh, and that's why there will be no justice brought about for these officers. So now, if you could, Lisa, th this has now snowballed. It's become bigger and bigger every day. I, I thought, honestly, that the regime was going to uh, really clamp down this weekend mm -hmm. because it had gone mm -hmm. on for about 10 days. Various cities all across the country, women, mostly led by women, yeah. taking to the streets, removing their headscarves, protests just out in the open, unheard of over these past mm -hmm. decades. This latest development now is that it's, it's made its way to the college campuses. Tell me about that development. Yeah, so on both sides, both of the part of the regime and the part of the people, this is the most brazen we've seen them. This is the most uh, violent we've seen them on both sides. Uh, the, on the part of the people, they're not backing down anytime soon. And even though it is a women-led or the catalyst, again, being women's rights movement, you see people of all ages on the streets. You see men and women out on the streets. But you do see a lot of those videos coming out with women cutting their hair in protest or burning their hijab and walking around so bravely without hijab. We've never seen this uh, in this, you know, on this scale. Uh, and yes, over the weekend, uh, there was peaceful protests at uh, Sharif University. Sharif University is like an MIT or Harvard. The best and brightest uh, students in Iran are accepted to that university in Tehran. 
government forces closed off the campus. They didn't allow anyone to escape or get out, and they just started shooting at these protesters. We still don't know what the death toll is. We don't know uh, how many people got rounded up, but we're told it's anywhere between 30 and 120 uh, were arrested and taken to an undisclosed location. What will happen to them, we don't know. But in solidarity, more college students came out. Again, the regime doing this to make an example out of these college students, but yet Instead of uh, college students being scared to come out, it has brought out more students. And uh, we, we had footage from uh, Tabriz University on the foreign desk and many other universities across Iran. Another difference between previous uh, protests and this one, I will say, is how widespread it is. Um, you know, we, we think of the modern cool kids of Tehran, that's the capital city. Uh, and then we we uh, look at you know mo you know more urban uh, areas as where these protests are generally held. But we're seeing them in rural areas. More importantly, we're seeing them in clerical cities like Qom, Q O M is the name of the city where uh, all of their madrasas are. Those are where the very very religious uh, people live. The clerical students go to school, mm. and we're seeing protests there. So it's very telling how widespread this is across the country. Lisa, uh, you mentioned this remarkable uh, scene of, of women ripping off their hijabs and burning them. And it evokes the 60s women's, women's liberation movement here in America, burning bras. I mean, it's pretty quaint to think that the fight then was to burn a bra. And here, these are women who want to burn a headscarf that they're forced to wear to, to dehumanize them so that they can't show their hair in public. So one must ask, where are the traditional Western American feminists standing by these women? Where are, from the old school, Nancy Pelosi, Dianne Feinstein, Elizabeth Warren, and certainly the young generation of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Rashida Tlaib, and Ilhan Omar? I have not seen them speak out on behalf of the sisterhood in Iran. No, and I, I tweeted this um, when, when the, the uh, uh, movement started. We got a few obligatory tweets from AOC uh, and, and the squad, but nothing meaningful. And where's Kamala Harris in all of this? Mm. Someone who really touts herself as the first, the first female vice pre uh, president of, of the Western world, and now she's um, completely silent when it comes to really giving support to women who need it whose yeah. lives are literally on the line and we're hearing nothing yeah. from them. And again, the squad, women who are Muslim, women who are uh, who are self-proclaimed women of color are not coming to the aid of these innocent Iranian women who are calling out to the West for support. Yeah, and these are the same women who say that, you know, because the Supreme Court decided that you don't have an inherent right to kill an unborn child right up till the moment of birth, uh, and, and your local elected representatives per state should be able to make that uh, decision for the people who live in your state. They said that was an authoritarian theocracy, um, but they won't actually say much about a real authoritarian theocracy. Uh, well, that's, that would be the unofficial sort of cultural uh, opposition here in America to this. What about the official response from America? You mentioned 2009. Barack Obama didn't do much during the Green Revolution. What has Joe Biden done so far uh, officially? Yeah, we've had two statements from Joe Biden. One, there was a mention of Masa Amini uh, at the UN General Assembly. And then uh, earlier this week, we got a statement from the White House in support. But I'll tell you, um, although the uh, Iranian protesters do need the podium support, what they need more than anything, and I, this is so, so, so important, and you would think so, it's just common sense, to walk away from the Iran nu nuclear negotiation table. You cannot in one breath say that I support the people of Iran and their movement, and in the same breath go back to the uh, negotiating table to normalize relations with a brutal, uh, horrific a murderous regime to give them billions of dollars to not only put back into their morality police and their revolutionary guard and murdering their uh, their their citizens, but to also put back into regional terror that will affect our national security and our assets in the region yeah. to go back to supporting Hezbollah and Hamas and the list goes on and on. So the real support is not just in you know supporting the people, which again I, the Iranian people are thankful for the statement that finally came out after two weeks uh, earlier this week. Uh, but they really are very keen on seeing the United States and the West step away from the negotiating table to truly isolate this regime and hopefully see an end to it. It's going to require pressure. It's going to require drawing attention to it. That's why we're doing this. I see you hovering over Los Angeles, and I know what a dynamic Persian-American community there is in that town. You represent them well. Lisa Deftari, thank you for joining us. Thank you. More to come on O'Connor tonight.